Hello everyone, good afternoon. I am hoping that I'm gonna be able to see some comments. I'm not even sure I know how to make that work. But as you come in, say hi, and then I can see whether I can actually see the comments. And if I can't, then I'm gonna learn how to do it next time because I wanna be able to talk back to you guys as I'm talking and you're talking to me. So I didn't get, I didn't manage to get it into um, yesterday. So that was, that's been my goal is to try to get it on Wednesdays, every Wednesday, my new little live that I've been doing for myself and just for others that are interested in it and kind of getting me getting better at practicing as we are pre preparing more of the dinner table talks, as we're doing more of the farm to table dinners, um, as I'm doing more of my garden talks on Sunday live, it just gives me an opportunity to get better at it. So as you're jumping on, say hi, and then that way I can see who else. Like sometimes it'll tell me who all's on here, and I can't even see that part. So let me see if there's other buttons I can push. I don't see any right there. Oh wait, what happened just now? Oh, look. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can say it. It says comments will appear here. So say hi when you jump on. All right. So the first thing I wanted to do in this topic today of living within the harvest, um, I'll tell you the story about how that got into my lexicon here in a second. But the first thing I wanted to do was talk about the farm to table event. So out at Freedom Harvest Farms, which is my family's farm in Taft, and Joe and I will actually be moving to the farm uh, at the end of the summer. And so we're moving that direction. Our life is moving that direction. And all of that being said, we are hosting with my family a farm to table event. We've now done two of them. We had one in April, at the end of April, and then we had um, one on Tuesday night. The one on Tuesday night was a pizza party. I've been working with uh, Chef C. I always miss do his name wrong because his name because we call him Chris, but his name is John C. Pro C. John Prado. Chef C. John Prado. So Chef Prado. The chef over at Roosevelt's in um, Rockport, I believe. I haven't been. We're planning on going. Um, but I'm very thankful to be able to partner up with those guys. That's been really great. And then in addition to that, I also wanted to thank Robert Chan, who is a local home brewer. And he's been home brewing for a while. He's, they're fairly, him and his wife, Sophia, are fairly new to the Corpus Christi area. Pretty awesome people. Excited to get to know them better. And um, he's a home brewer. But he's also a chef, and, um, and and they're both engineers here in town, too. So that's part of the reason why we get to have them here in our community. He's been homebrewing for many years, kind of like me. He's a gardener. He's hands in the dirt learning. He's been doing his brewing for a very long time. So he had lots of great information to give us about that. And he was there um, giving the guests a taste of the goodies that he was doing. So Chef Prado made us pizzas using gluten-free crust. Um, he actually made those crusts using yucca and then some using cauliflower. So that was kind of a fun and interesting thing. And then we made ice cream and we had a delicious salad and it was just a really, really good meal. And it all came from stuff grown here locally, either on our own farm, things I'm growing, uh, at a local farm like cannoli dairy for our, our cheese and our milk and our yogurt and things like that that we're using. Um, and then all of the vegetables either came from places that I grow vegetables or from some of my friends that grow vegetables um, and, and do actually sell at the farmer's markets. Elemental Farm sells at the Saturday farmer's market on Sundays and um, Strubar Cottage. Oh, and also the Lone Star Dairy, uh, sorry, Lone Star Prairie Farm sells their stuff at the Saturday farmer's market as well. So there's, you know, lots of great stuff available. Right now is a really, really good time. If you're new to our area, uh, right now is a good time to go to the markets because you're going to see lots and lots of produce right now. And you're going to see it over the next couple of weeks. But as things start to get hot fast, we will see a downshift very quickly. Um, and so this is kind of coming to the, e the end of our heaviest harvest seasons. But lots of good stuff at the markets right now, so go check that out. So all of that concept being said, living within our harvest. So if you're coming on, let me see if I can push that up. Okay, if you're coming on, just uh, jump in, say hi, let me know you're here so that I can smile back and talk back to you. Okay, 
So, living within our harvest, what does that mean to me? I was sitting there right after um, the event yesterday morning with my parents, and we were doing the final cleanups and things like that, and my mom pointed up to a little sign that they have uh, in their kitchen that has a um, green John Deere tractor on it, and then it says the words, live within the harvest. And she said, that's what we're doing. And I was like, that's exactly, exactly my goals. That's exactly what I want to do in life. That's exactly how I want to live. And that comes from a space of me thinking consistently about the idea that I have strong, strong abilities to grow abundance, but that I also plant plenty seeds. And so that's like my hands in the dirt concept of this whole idea. But it's the same for life, really. If we're planting plenty of seeds, and we're growing abundantly, then we can live within our harvest. Meaning that we're not constantly looking for something outside of ourselves. They're not constantly looking for something from someone else. Although what ends up happening whenever we live within our own harvest is that we open our hearts up to being willing to accept and receive gifts and receive money and receive the things that we desire to create more abundance, to grow more abundance, to plant more seeds, plant more ideas. Um, and so the idea of living within the harvest, and if you think about a farm to table dinner and the success of this last one that we had, the last two that we had, and the amazing people that are involved in this, and it's, you know, I'm leading the charge to make it happen, and I'm running the business that kind of is developing the concept and all of that kind of stuff, but I'm living within the harvest of the network of amazing farmers that we have created and amazing friends that we've created and living within the what i would consider probably the greatest asset i currently have and that that is a strong network of people and if you think about that farm to table dinner right um if if the end goal would be well at the end of the day we're going to work to continue to get um you know as much return on investment for those particular events then the more that I can grow on my own property, and that's living within my own harvest, the better. But part of that is not just what I grow on my own property, but what I can, who I have access to, what network I have access to, um, other folks that I have supported while they were trying to get started so that whenever I need their product or their, or whatever they have available, then I can have access to that as well. And so when we, do things to develop our local industry and we do things to develop our own networks and we do things to develop our own property um, when we take better care of our own selves that is the idea that we're creating great abundance around us but we're doing that by planting plenty seeds and living within the harvest that we've created and living within what we've created around us and thinking about well how does that you know outreach beyond just our own sphere of influence but one of the things that <clears throat> I've been talking to folks a lot about lately is um, going back to that like inner self-love and value and if I can um, within my own self live within the harvest of the love and value that I create inside myself and ultimately not getting into a position where I'm constantly shape-shifting to meet the needs of someone else and doing things that will make someone else happy, but doing things that will make me happy, that's living within what I personally can uh, create and what I personally can um, uh, create in terms of turnover, investment, investing in myself creates more for me to put out into the universe, which then returns on that investment. So everything I put out there is what I get back. So what happens is the more seeds I plant, the more abundance I grow, I grow, the larger my harvest is. And the larger my harvest is, the greater, more expansive ability I have, I can live within a greater, a larger, more expansive harvest. I have more to offer. And so that's why continuing to consistently live within that harvest while also planting plenty seeds, I grow my abundance consistently and when you do that you see a consistent um, energetic like return on that investment in your heart space so when you're then in your heart space you start to be able to feel more loving and supported and 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 then you feel a little bit braver and um, you feel energy from other folks that are willing to help contribute because like I said at the beginning of this 
that network is a part of your harvest. Many, many years of love and compassion that you've been giving to folks. And here's the thing. If you're sitting in a, in a position where you're feeling like, well, they just haven't given me enough. They haven't given me enough. I've given and given and given and they haven't given me enough. Then what you're focusing on is the, the lack. You're not focusing on the abundance of the harvest. And if you're focusing on the lack, then you're just going to get more lack. Because eventually um, someone's going to say back to you, well, you haven't given me enough. You haven't given me enough. And so then you're starting to receive less because you've put less, you, you've put a more of a requirement or a, or you've taken some freedom off of the ability for people to just give without, give to you without feeling obligated. And, and so I, I think that that's a huge part of this concept of living within your harvest. Um, but for me, when I look at what is it that I'm willing to do and what is it that I'm willing to, um, what is it that I'm willing to be a part of? What is it that I'm willing to like overexert my efforts for all of the time? What is it that I'm willing to, um, work on? What is it that I'm willing to work on? And one of the things that I've found in this recent conversation of living within your harvest is that it's, it's a lot easier to live within your own harvest. And part of living within your own harvest is facing what's going on with your own self, facing what's going on with your own internal garbage, basically. And, and you go, well, I don't want to eat rotten cucumbers. Well, no, but that's a part of your harvest. So what are you going to do with it? Well, I'm certainly not going to waste it. I'm not going to waste some 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 pain or some some crisis or I'm not going to waste that opportunity to level up. I'm going to learn from it. I'm going to have an experience from it. So what am I going to do as a gardener? I'm going to take the rotting cucumber and I'm going to feed it to my chickens or I'm going to put it in my composting system. And in both of those places, they alchemize the cucumber and now the cucumber either becomes healthy compostable soil that I can then put back into my garden in another space, or the rotting cucumber alchemizes into an egg which I can eat later on. And so that's the idea of living within the harvest. So everything that's happening around you is a part of the seeds that you planted. And I know that that's a truth that's very difficult for many people to hear because there's a lot of things you could say to me that you that that you could very forcibly say I did it pull this into my life but you're gonna have a hard time convincing me of that because I don't believe that I believe that we plant the seeds of everything that is grown in our lives every single thing that has grown in our lives we've planted the seed and if we don't want it there then we haven't brought in the lightness to clean it up we haven't been able to, we haven't been willing to even look at it being there. And if you go back to the idea of your harvest and living within your harvest with that concept of light versus dark and spaces needing to be cleaned out and needing to go in and look at some painful things, it's constantly what I talk about when it comes to working in your gardens and cleaning up your gardens and finding where you need more, more energy, more vitality, life, more air, more sunshine, more flow. And in each one of those spaces in the garden, you'll find lots of dis-ease. You'll find pests and pathogens. The light can't get in there and it's dark and things can grow in there. Things that maybe we don't like, things that are harmful or painful or some type of crisis. Just in, and, and it starts small. It starts as one tiny little weed that then you ignored. And then it grew into a larger plant that then seeded and then planted some more of problems around it. And that planted some more problems around it and planted some more problems within it. So you're living within your harvest. You're living within what seeds that have, have been planted. You're living within the abundance, but what is the abundance you've created? And so once you begin to get to the point where you've begun to release all that stuff, you've been to cleaning it out, you've been letting it all go, because it's not something that you want to harvest, but you've been alchemizing what it was that you didn't want to harvest. You've been alchemizing it because you know that there is a harvest opportunity in there. And then you get to the point where you're like, okay, I don't need, to, I don't have to have the rotting all the time in order to have the golden stuff. So I can keep it clean on a regular basis. I can go in there. I can tap out and, and look through and, and weed and, 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 and pull from the fruits and the vines 
quicker and all of those types of things and keep it in a place that you want it to keep, want to keep it that you've allowed sunshine to go into some of the darkness and light up the darkness and the darkness no longer matters anymore that you've then gotten to that place where now you're saying okay well now what am I gonna do what next where am I and what do I want right so then you start thinking about well a number one you've cleaned out that space so now you've got a new place to create a garden right Either you're upgrading your garden, you're up-leveling your garden, you're enhancing the space that you already had, or you're creating a new one, something new. And it might be scary. I might fail. That garden space that I create over there might be the worst garden space that ever created and is a total disaster. But that's okay because I'm at a space now where I'm saying, what do I want? How am I leveling up? Where am I going? Who am I? Who's my garden? What is my garden? Who am I? What do I want there? What do I actually want growing there? And then you begin to create within your harvest what you actually want growing. And this goes all the way, I mean, this goes way beyond the garden. This goes into my business, farm to table dinners, people that we work with, people that we purchase food from all of the different things within the harvest that we've created. And are we gonna be constantly killing off every new idea that comes within our space? Within our, like every time a new bug comes into the garden or every time a new plant that we don't know comes into our garden, do we immediately kill it? Because we're afraid of it? Or do we go, oh, nice to see you. I wonder who you are. I wonder what you'll do. I wonder who you'll feed. <laughs> That's what I often think when I think about the insects. Okay, everything has benefit. Everything has worth. Every single thing that exists and matters is here because it has worth. Even the darkness. If you're still allowing the darkness in, then it's still giving you some value. If it's not giving you any value anymore, then you need to turn the light on and the darkness will leave. But you can't do that if you don't go look at it. And oftentimes, if you're a investigator person like me personality like me you've got to touch it and feel it and maybe even squish it before you know you didn't want to squish it so that's the idea of living within the harvest it's not about living within your budget grow your budget if you want more budget it's not about working harder work on the things that matter and learn the things that matter and when I say matter, I, I, this has been a word that I've been using a lot, and I think a lot of times people don't really understand what I mean when I say the word matter, because we've used the word matter in a way that is different than what it actually means if you look it up in the dictionary. It's, it's, the, it's the, the creation of an actual physical piece of something, right? Something is matter. It's an actual, all the particles, you know all the little things that make it up my finger is matter that the this uh, the sweater is matter my glasses are matter well does it really matter do you want it to matter how much energy are you giving it is it what you want in your in your harvest is it what you want to be harvesting if it's not what you want to be harvesting what do you want to be harvesting Alrighty, that's pretty much all I have. I hope you guys have a really, really, really good day and I'll see you uh, on Sunday. I'll see you if you wanted to join me live in the garden. I do that every Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. I will see you on YouTube. If you're watching this replay, maybe make a comment below, like the video if you like it, subscribe if you haven't already. Please do, I hope you will. Um, and then of course I'll see you around town, maybe out and about. And, of course, always in my Instagram and social media, Facebook streams. Alrighty. Love you, folks. See you soon. Bye.